One uses the word shadow education to talk about the mimicking of schooling. Extra lessons delivered for a fee outside schools. So it's particularly extra mathematics, extra language, extra history, physics, whatever. Uh, why the metaphor of the shadow? Well, that's because it mimics the school system. So tutors provide extra lessons for a fee for students who are already in the school system. And then as the curriculum of the mainstream changes, it changes in the shadow, it changes in the extra lessons. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights, 1948, Article 26, says education shall be free, education shall be compulsory. Through shadow education, education is clearly not free. Education costs money. What is happening in many countries is that shadow education is a hidden privatization of public systems. And this has been exposed, for example, by the Pratichi Trust in West Bengal, India. Nobel Prize winner Amartya Sen has looked at this. Amartya Sen has explicitly problematized the fact that as West Bengal has got more prosperous, the parents who have felt that they can afford private tutoring do so. And what that is actually doing is forcing the parents who can't afford private tutoring either to get the money from somewhere or to get left behind. So the spread of shadow education, especially in low-income countries, is highly problematic to the notion of education as a human right. It can cause a lot of dissonance within the classroom. Uh, what we see in some countries is that the students are schooling all day, tutoring all evening, all weekend, the students are tired, the students pay more respect to the tutor because they are paying hard cash to the tutor, uh, they are choosing to go to the tutor, they have less respect for the teachers, the students are tired, when do they sleep and relax? Answer, during the school time. So it's not a neutral phenomenon, although one uses the metaphor of the shadow as if it is merely a shadow. In this particular case, the shadow does have a backwash to the mainstream. In Asia, it's particularly prevalent, but I have to say it's becoming a worldwide phenomenon, and there's growing shadow education in Europe, in Africa, in North America. But in Asia, South Korea, has particularly high levels of shadow education, something like 80% uh, in primary schools, uh, approximately the same number in secondary schools. Hong Kong likewise, over 80% of the students in Hong Kong are getting supplementary private tutoring. In Europe, Greece is particularly high, Cyprus, Malta. Eastern Europe, there are moderate levels, uh, but uh, still significant. Western Europe, uh, I've seen numbers for England of 12% of primary school students receiving private supplementary tutoring, 8% of secondary school students. So throughout Europe, with the exception of Scandinavia, Scandinavia there is some supplementary private tutoring but less and the reasons for that are that families are still more trusting of the school system. The school system seems to be uh, able to provide a, a complete package which the families feel is adequate and doesn't need supplementation. Once it becomes ingrained in the culture, it is very hard to find ways to change it. And for that reason, that's why I'm saying to European governments that they should look at this phenomenon and it's one of the domains in which Europe can learn from Asia. Uh, the European governments should look at what is happening in particularly South Korea, also Hong Kong, Taiwan, elsewhere, and act before it's too late. First, support the education system that they are themselves running so that it's not necessary. Second, they can call attention to it, they can say to parents, Parents, look, there are, there are issues here, uh, particularly when it's a matter of too much pressure on young people. Thirdly, governments throughout the world should pay more attention to regulation of the sector. At the moment, we have, on the whole, good regulations for our school system. 
worldwide there are very weak regulations on the tutoring industry.